In this video, we're going to look at some of the ways we can use the High Definition Render Pipeline in Unity to create reflections and refractions of light in our materials. The palace can be a pretty troublesome place at night. So the statue in the middle of the palace is looking pretty exposed right now, and I want to make sure our statue is going to be safe this evening. So I think I'd like to protect it with some glass casing. I've added a cube around the statue here to act as a glass casing, but now we can't see the statue. Let's take a look at how we can create a glass-like material that reflects and refracts light passing through it using the default lit shader in the High Definition Render Pipeline. Let's create a new material in our project called Casing and assign it to our cube. We need to tell the High Definition Render Pipeline that this material is transparent, so let's set the surface type to transparent and reduce the opacity by setting the alpha on our albedo to about 5. This looks okay. We have some light passing through our cube, but we can definitely make it more glass-like. Let's increase the smoothness value to 1. As you can see, our material is now reflective, but it's only reflecting our skybox rather than the geometry in our scene. This is because sky reflection is the default reflection type in the reflection hierarchy. When we haven't told Unity how to reflect our environment, it will default to just reflecting the skybox. For more realistic reflections, we need to tell the High Definition Render Pipeline how to reflect our environment. We can do this by either using Screen Space Reflections or Reflection Probes. Screen Space Reflections are a real-time approach to creating reflections based on the screen's depth and color buffers. This means that while the technique creates more accurate reflections, it is limited by what's currently in view of the camera and can only reflect game objects that are currently on screen. For these reasons, screen space reflections are best used to create subtle reflections on materials such as wet floors and puddles. Screen space reflections can be enabled in the High Definition Render Pipeline Asset Settings and can be controlled using the Screen Space Reflections Volume Override. It's also worth noting that screen space reflections can only occur on opaque objects, so we won't choose them for our glass shader here. The other way we can create reflections of our scene geometry is by using reflection probes. Reflection probes capture the scene from a specific point and store the result as a texture that our materials can use to display reflections. Let's add a new reflection probe to our scene here by choosing Game Object, Light, Reflection Probe. There are three reflection probe types we can choose from, Baked, Custom, and Real-Time. Baked makes the reflection probe use a static cube map texture at runtime. This is effective if your project mostly contains static, geometry, and lighting conditions. Baked reflections are much more performant than real-time probes, so you should use this mode if your scene does not need to reflect moving objects and your reflections won't need to be updated at runtime. A custom reflection probe allows us to assign a cube map texture to act as the reflection probe's capture view of the scene. This can be useful if we want to assign a texture for reflections which is not visible to the probe in our scene for baking. This can be extremely useful to fake certain lighting conditions. For instance, if shadows from our scene are impacting reflections too much, we can use a previously baked texture instead. Real-time mode allows you to capture accurate reflections based on the current state of your scene. With real-time mode enabled, you can choose to update the reflection probe every frame or when the component's onEnable function is called. The on-demand setting allows us to capture a cube map via script and can be useful if lighting conditions are changed dramatically. As you might imagine, lots of reflection probes in your scene, which are set to update in real time every frame, can be expensive in terms of performance, so it's worth using this mode sparingly. Most of the geometry in our scene is static, so let's set our reflection probe to baked. The Influence volume defines the area of nearby reflective materials that the probe affects. We can choose between two different volume shapes, sphere and box. Let's use box reflection on our probe here and set the size to 80. The blend distance controls the point inside of our probe that we begin blending with other surrounding probes. Let's set this to 25. We can use the capture settings to control the method that the reflection probe uses to capture its surroundings. The default settings are fine for this example, but you may want to adjust these settings to suit the needs of your project. 
For more information on reflection probes in the High Definition Render Pipeline, follow the link below. It's worth noting that the weight slider gives us control of how much influence each of our reflection probes contribute to our scene reflections. If we create multiple probes in our scene, they intersect. The weight slider is also used to control the priority of each probe. Generally, you shouldn't need to adjust this, but it can be useful if you need to transition between two sets of reflection probes. For instance, blending between day and night reflections as the sun goes down. Let's place a few more around our scene so that we can get better reflections from different angles. So now we have more realistic reflections in our scene. We can still do a bit more to make this glass look more realistic by enabling refractions on our material as light passes through the glass. Refractions can be enabled via the transparency input section of our material. We can choose between three different refraction types, box, sphere, or thin. As we're trying to simulate refraction on a cube, let's pick box as our refraction model. Here we can set our index of refraction and thickness. Higher index of refraction values produce more intense refraction. Thickness is measured in meters and should match the size of the object. Generally, you won't need to change the index of refraction setting. 1.3 or 1.4 should be enough for simulating glass or water-based refraction. We can also use the transmittance color property to tint and change the color of the refraction as light passes through the object. With this enabled, we can also reduce the smoothness of our material to create a more blurred effect that looks like frosted glass. Reflections and refractions are great ways to add more detail to your scenes and help make them look more realistic. For more information on reflection and refraction in Unity, follow the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.